If you had one shot, one opportunity, to install all of the Windows XP updates you ever wanted, even the optional ones, just like it's 2009, would you seize it, or would you let it slip? God, this is cheesy. Well, you better hold on a little bit tighter because the opportunity is here! Thanks to the work of Curb and various other contributors you can read on the website, you can update Windows XP and 2000 and Server 2003 and 7, just like you could originally. So let's have a look, shall we? I hate this chat. Hi, I'm Snoopy, and when I said just like 2009, I wasn't kidding. Not only does this restore automatic updates, he reverse engineered the original ActiveX control and managed to recreate the original Windows Update website. Which means you can now check for updates at will. Again. As far as I know, this hasn't been possible for years. But in order for me to show you how to do this, I'm going to need to get a different computer because the cursed ass Windows XP machine has already been fully updated. Okay, this is not preferable. Welcome to my computer. Uh, again. I had actually recorded this, like, on real hardware, but since then the installer has been updated, as in there is one now. So we're going to be using a boring virtual machine. But I can assure you this does work on real hardware. Not only because I tested it, but also because I can't imagine why it wouldn't. That computer doesn't exactly run Windows XP anymore. In fact, it runs a Minecraft server. And there's a video on that if you're interested. There's a card. Anyways, let's get into this. So the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure the net is working. And to do that, we're going to open Internet Explorer and go to google.com and see if it loads. Hey, it loads! So now with that done, we can now go to the actual Legacy Update website. LegacyUpdate.net And now we're going to scroll down a little bit, and then as we can see, there is a button that says Install, and we're going to click on that. Now if you're using Windows 7, there are some more steps which you need to do, um, but they're on the website. But since we're on Windows XP, and we're also going to be looking at Windows 2000, we're just going to click the button. Click Save. Save it on the desktop, I guess. Cleanliness was never an option. Click Run. Click Run again. And now this is the new installer. So this is handy. I am so glad that they now include this. You will need this if you want to do basically anything on the internet. So we're going to make sure that's checked. Or don't. I'm not your dad. Now click Install, and it's going to begin installing. This will actually take a while, since it's not just installing Legacy Update. Well, okay, it usually takes a while. It will take a while if your host machine isn't a Ryzen 5 5600X. And there we go! Legacy Update is now installed! So now I just need to click Check for Updates, and now it'll begin checking for updates. Uh... Hmm. That's not good. Why is that not working? <laughs> Restart for good measure. <laughs> I guess. And now this will take a really long time, especially if it's a new install, so um, best give it some time. I don't know if this is a legacy update issue or if it's a uh, updating Windows XP issue, but you know, Windows update has always been slow. Oh, right, the update update. So we're going to want the update update. And as we can see, it's already working, but we haven't actually installed any updates yet. We still need the updates to make the update work. We can check for updates again. And there we go, we now have an absolute mess of updates. And as you can see, it works, obviously. And it will work on any version of Windows XP from RTM to Service Pack 3. But what about 2000? Well, let's have a look, shall we? Hi, welcome to Windows 2000, an operating system that looks 100% less. I need to not say that, Google's gonna take my absence. Now we need to make sure the Inter is netting, and to do that, we're going to use the Internet Explorer. That's too f big. Hey, it works. Now we need to install Legacy Update. And to do that, we need to go to LegacyUpdate.net. Okay, so the version of Internet Explorer is a little bit older in this. So that's why it looks like piss. So let's ignore that. Now we need to press Install Legacy Update. It says Install, I promise. It just doesn't look right. So we need to save the program to disk. Save it to the desktop, because cleanliness can fuck. Now we click Open, and then... As we can see, make sure it's installing the root certificates, or don't, I'm not your daddy. Click install, and it's going! And this will probably take a while, except for real, actually this time. Uh... 
VMware kind of does this. Uh, you need to force restart it. It doesn't do this on real hardware. Uh, wait, no, no. It's supposed to do that. Hey, there we go. It's got to give it a moment. Okay, there we go. That's finished. And now we can check for updates. And this will probably take a while. Hey, look, updates, or in this case, update. And look, it's an important one, too, because it needs to be installed separately. So let's just do that and do that. Okay, all right, I got it. I know how to use... F important thing about Windows 2000, though, is that you might notice there are two things that say update. And the important thing is to not use Windows Update and to use Legacy Update, because unlike Windows XP, where that one does actually work, this one doesn't. In fact, it just sounds like broken glass. Yeah, so let's ignore that. And do the other one. Much better. Hell yeah. Oh look, the update update. How grand. Look at that. And as we can see, we have at least four hours worth of updates here. So that's pretty good. So we can just click on this and then click on that. And they're installing! So we have officially installed updates on Windows 2000. And I gotta stop this before I run out of hard disk space. Bro, that was fast. <laughs> yeah. I hope this video helped you out. I think it goes without saying that this solution, compared to the more well-known ones, is extremely easy to apply by not requiring a self-hosted proxy or dicking about in the registry especially. But anyways, gigantic thank you to Nat, to Graz, and Nilly for supporting the channel before it's even ready. And thank you for watching the video.